What is up everyone? So today we're going over the Oben CTT1000 uh, tabletop tripod. Uh, we're gonna go over its features, its price point, and whether or not it's a good purchase for you. So let's get into this uh, product review and see what it's all about. and see why I chose to keep this as my primary tripod and the ways I'm gonna utilize it. All right, so the Oben CTT1000, um, the box itself is really nicely constructed um, for something that's under a hundred dollars okay so you get a nice stout box which is good because i mean for something that's carbon fiber and stuff if you, if you don't always have it in a gear bag you know you kind of want to put it back um, so that way it doesn't get damaged uh, and it stays nice for a longer period of time um, some people like to thrash their stuff because it's um, it's a tool and for me it is a tool but I'm more of a recreational user so I like to keep my stuff a little bit nicer uh, in terms of uh, tripods uh, so you get the user manual uh, the first thing you get when you open it and uh, it's really nicely laid out so everything you need is in here very nice uh, instruction manual, okay? I usually don't do unboxings like this. I usually have it already out because I either buy it used or I don't see the use in unboxing it. But uh, this uh, product in particular was really nicely placed, so I figured I'd do an unboxing. Uh, it talks about its limited warranty, um, what you have here, okay? So that's another pamphlet. Typically people throw this stuff away, but I mean, when it's done on nicely constructed paper, I tend to keep this stuff with the box. Okay, so then it comes with this uh, little piece right here that was just dangling on, like a little sales tag. I was dangling on the actual tripod itself. And it gives you the full specs on the back, an image of what they have, very nicely done. Uh, when I see this stuff, I think they, they take pride in their products. Um, not just this brand, but other brands as well. Uh, and then at the same time, it's like, well, if you didn't give me all that, you know, and maybe you uh, had a link for me to look at it online, would that have saved me more money? You know, it's kind of a trade off. Uh, some people like the packaging, some people don't. All right. And this is how it's packaged inside. So you got the tripod, the extension and your uh, Allen keys. All right. So this is like a Kaizen foam. Um, the material so basically if you're not uh, familiar with kaizen foam it's layers and what you do is between those layers you could pry up a layer like so and tear it off and then you have uh, areas where you could cut out but you also have more layers so that way you could go uh, and utilize whatever product you have in depth okay so if you want to say this end higher than this end, you could pull out some of those layers. You cut away the area. So you would cut away, like say a square here and a rectangle here, and you could pull out as many layers as you want in that cutaway. And uh, it'll allow you to do different depths. So you could do something that's like deeper in this area and then something that's more shallow in this area. So whatever it is you're trying to store sits nicely in your, um, in your box okay so you got the two allen keys all right you got an extension tube we'll go over all that in a little bit and then you have the actual tripod itself okay so we'll go over its features and everything and then inside here so as you can see There's layers on the foam. And all they did was did a uh, clean cutaway all the way down and then repurposed this and put it back inside. So that way, when you put your extension in, it doesn't sit too deep, but it sits high enough for you to grab it, okay? Um, the way this Kaizen foam should have been cut out, should have been uh, peeled back and then each layer should have been exposed but this should have remained inside uh, but you know 
this being a potential throwaway product, they probably just cut all the way through and then glued a bottom half to it, which you could tell they did. So you could see that they cut these clean and then glued one layer on the bottom and then uh, repurposed half of the layers that they cut away back into here to give you your height. So let's quickly go over the features that it has and then we'll go into the detail of each one of those features, okay? So, all right, so let's start with um, it, the whole tripod as a whole. All your specs are on this fascia here, all right? Um, and uh, so as far as this tripod's concerned, the maximum height you're gonna get is 15 and a half inches. So from here to the floor, maximum height, 15 and a half inches. The minimum height fully collapse at its lowest position with these all the way out. You're looking at 4.2 inches tall, okay? And then the, the max load rating that this thing could handle is gonna be 11 pounds, okay? This thing weighs uh, 0.98 pounds. Uh, the folded length when it's fully collapsed is 10.4 inches in height once it's fully collapsed all the way down. And it's a three section, uh, tabletop tripod okay so those are the features uh, you have your quick disconnect um, knob here okay you have your quick release plate so if you have a camera up here you have that uh, you have your pan knob so you have a pan knob here okay you have your angle adjustments on the legs to kick them in and out you have a 360 panoramic head okay you have your selfie stick or extender for this, so it could go even higher. And then you have your rubber uh, tips here that are gonna keep it from damaging any um, soft surfaces, okay? So now let's get into the nitty gritty on each one of these features and why I actually am gonna keep this for my personal tripod and um, why, I chose to keep, uh, why I chose to purchase this. Okay, so let's go over um, why I chose to purchase this tripod in the first place, okay? Um, so this tripod is a compact tripod that I wanted something, because I have the Leo Photo uh, tripod and it's just bulky. These The legs are huge on it, okay? And when this thing's fully collapsed, look how slim of a profile that is. It's probably like inch and a half maybe, okay? I could get a full grip around this, all right? So this means that I could tuck it away and um, not worry about it, you know, being all bulky and worrying about taking a tripod. Also, the other benefit to having this tripod here is the fact that these are all metal, okay? And they're extendable. So you could extend them all the way out to the length that you desire. So that way you could get a little bit taller tripod, all right? Compared to like the Leo Photo, you could do the same thing um, but the legs are a lot more bulky, you know, uh, you're looking at, I don't know, I'd say this is about a half inch, um, round here and it tapers down. Whereas the Leo photo is more of a one inch, uh, shaft here and it does it, it tapers down of course, but you're still left with a leg at the very smallest leg. Uh, you're still left with something more larger than this very top one. Okay. So even at its fully collapsed state, look how tiny that is. Slim profile. Um, another reason why I chose this one over even the Fiesel, I ended up selling that one. And the reason why I chose this is because I could take off this ball head here. So I, I, I could take off this ball head and you're left with the quarter 20 thread uh, right here. So now I could run a monopod, okay? So now this will double down as a monopod tripod, okay? Because those of us who know that monopods are real short as far as the tripod's concerned, look at the uh, leg extension that you get with this thing, you know? It's just massive. It's like a little spider. And it's very stout, okay? So it gets real low to the ground, real low profile. And look how large that is. All right? So that's really unique. Uh, Obin is not the only brand that makes this style tripod. There's other brands too on Amazon that is the same exact thing. So I'm thinking they just rebrand them. But the uh, format of this thing's 
this thing is amazing. Uh, I couldn't ask for something uh, to better suit my needs, all right? And it's not like I got a heavy camera either. So 11 pounds is gonna suit me well. Uh, those of us who have, you know, some heavy cameras, uh, you may wanna reconsider on something like this, but then again, you're probably not gonna use a, a monopod setup either. So you're gonna go into something that has a bigger um, tripod uh, setup anyway, okay? Uh, so you could pull these feet off and then you have the spikes at the bottom, the aluminum spikes, super sharp, will damage uh, soft material. So only use these, uh, you know, on, on the ground in dirt or whatever. Um, the other brands that are similar to this um, actually have one difference in them and it's the screws right here. So I noticed some of the brands that you could get on Amazon that's not open, but it's like a direct replica or I mean, maybe Oben's uh, the replica, I'm unsure, but uh, they actually have threads on these screws here, okay? And I noticed that detail when looking a little bit closer into this stuff. Uh, it has threads here, so that way you could run uh, a phone off to the side, you know, your camera here, a phone off to the side, a screen, uh, maybe a shotgun mic, you could thread those directly into the screws, which is pretty awesome, okay? Uh, so that might be a feature that sells you on the other brands, okay? The only reason why I got the Obin, this one in particular, was because I got a good deal on it. So these typically retail for about $80, uh, $80 to $90 around that range. And then sometimes they go a little bit more depending on the ball head that they give you. Uh, but I got this for like $50-ish because uh, Amazon was running a sale. Um, so that was... That was a no-brainer, all right? Uh, at the bottom here, when you open up these legs, it's kind of weird because there is another feature here, a threaded base here, okay? And you could, this one looks like a 3 8 thread in there. I'm unsure what that's for. Um, maybe... You know what, maybe it's to add this to the bottom of it or something to hang a camera, but they don't have, they don't have a 3 8 thread that would go into this to connect it. Uh, there is support for a 3 8 thread in this um, thing. So you have an insert here. Let's talk about this extension here. So you have a quarter 20 to 3 8 insert, and then you have a 3 8 thread there. So that is a possibility but like i said i don't have anything that'll thread into that uh you have a quarter 20 here with a base plate okay so then you could cinch your camera down on that and lock it in uh remember this doesn't have a rubber piece so your camera may come loose and it doesn't have any set screws to prevent your camera from coming loose so that might be an issue for some people okay you have an extension here and another extension, okay? And what this allows you to do is extend your camera or the create a monopod setup, a little miniature one, okay? And then you can mount something like this on the top. So that's cool. Uh, you could also turn this into a selfie stick if you so desire, you know? So it has potential for everything, um, that you may need in a travel tripod, a little compact setup here, okay? Uh, but if you're interested in the, the other uh, brands with the uh, threads into the screws, I highly recommend you checking those out if you have a use for that because those always come on sale as well. Um, I just kind of saw this right away and I, I've always wanted something this compact that I just jumped on it, okay? Uh, so let's go over the ball head itself, okay? So the ball head, you got a level here. You unscrew it all the way, and then you have your little plate, okay? So this is a little slide setup. You don't have any pin here to keep it from falling out, but you do have the locking pins here to keep them from falling out, okay? 
So if this is loose and your, your camera is sitting on there, it still won't allow it to slide off, okay? So you wanna keep an eye out for that type of stuff when purchasing it. You do have the friction uh, rubber pieces here, so that way your camera doesn't unscrew. You have your little quarter 20 screw here that could also be uh, tightened with something else, like a flat blade, maybe even a, a nickel or something, or a dime could fit in there and tighten it. All right, that's fixed, it doesn't fall out, but I'm pretty sure if you unscrew it and you push pressure on it, you could unscrew that part. Uh, you have, so this one doesn't have a stud sticking out to mount this plate. It's actually uh, like um, most ball head tripods with this uh, quick disconnect plate. Uh, it has your Allen key with a, a countersunk screw that bolts it down, okay? You have a full pivot here. And then you also have the 90 part where you could drop it down at a 90 straight down. This, um, this ball head's real smooth. Um, one thing I don't like about ball heads is they're always moving from side to side. So you gotta actually fix them like this and then use the panoramic, I think that's what it's called, the panoramic um, panning wheel here and turn it from left to right. So that way you get a nice level shot, okay? You don't wanna loosen up this and then try to do it with this because you're gonna get something that's all wonky, okay? <laughs> Uh, the nice thing about this lever here also is it's it's spring loaded so you could pull it out and you could readjust where your lever is going to be and then you could tighten it so that way it doesn't hit any of your stuff out here okay at the very bottom here you could also go 3 8 so you could repurpose this to a 3 8 tripod if you so desire to and then you have your little thread of insert once more stainless steel um so they actually they actually gave you some really good stuff here for the price uh, the material of course is carbon fiber is super lightweight um, and i mean for the most part it's a nice setup uh, but like i said if you bump it see how it just unspins itself so that might be an issue okay tighten up the panoramic head see how it just goes off that's not really an issue for me unless I was doing like some extreme sports where I'm running with this thing or um, or I decided to use the panoramic head this may be an issue if you go in reverse okay but if you go in the tightening motion it will always be tightening so it shouldn't be an issue okay uh, one thing you can do if you feel like it's gonna be an issue is put a uh, lock washer on here. So I'm not sure if anyone's ever thought of that, but you could put a lock washer, a real uh, small flat lock washer on here. So when you tighten it down, it really grips into the, the base and uh, prevents it from unscrewing. But what I, I notice is this piece here unscrews more than this uh, top plate here. So maybe even a drop of Loctite if you know you're not gonna really need to remove this too often. Okay, like a little drop of blue Loctite in there. So when comparing the um, the Obin tripod to something like my Leo Photo tripod, as you can see the footprint difference. One thing to also remember is since this is metal, it does touch and so these will get damaged. They won't look pretty like uh, something like this rubber over mold will uh, protect so this kind of protects itself against it against uh, the rubbing between it uh, this one's gonna get a little scratched up but I actually like this one better because look how sleek that is you know in diameter like that's a big difference I can't fit my whole hand around this thing and I got pretty large hands it looks good you know it's substantial you can really knock someone out with this if you need to but look at the difference as far as uh, how compact that is. And uh, keep in mind, I put all this stuff on here so this doesn't come with it. So my final thoughts on this, uh, for under a hundred bucks, it's worth purchasing, 
especially if you get it for around that $60 price range, like I did, uh, jump on it. Uh, especially because it's carbon fiber. I mean, it's hard to get an aluminum tripod that's decent for that $50 range, you know? Um, something like this, it looks good, but it's not good for travel. Something like this is excellent for travel. It has a lot of uh, versatility purposes that you could use it with. So that that's like the biggest thing is how versatile can your equipment be? Uh, but that's that's all I mean for the most part. It's a tripod at the end of the day and if it works for you Hey, that's what makes it uh, worth purchasing, right? Um, that's gonna complete today's video on this open CTT 1000 tripod if you like this little uh, quick review or Semi quick review give it a thumbs up. It's greatly appreciate it If you want to see content like this and other content I'll be posting in the near future consider subscribing hit that notification bell and until next time, I'll see y'all in the next one. Thanks for watching.